Well, here we are, back with another episode. That, that, that intro was a little choppy. <laughs> oh boy! But anyways, hey, we're back. We're uh, we're live here. Um, we're 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 doing another episode here. Minnesota left-handers, as always, joined by Nate Doimer, the uh, the brains behind the whole operation here. Um, Nate, what what do you got to start us off with today? Oh, I'm sorry. Is dead air bad for a podcast? Uh, I was I was booking flights to Arizona, uh, oh. so put that aside. Maybe we'll, we'll we'll do this and we'll we'll talk about that another time. Um, no, we you and I were in prelim, preliminary talks for for a winter Arizona trip, which I'm sure we'll discuss on on later podcasts. But I can put that aside for our fall lefty righty four ball. If anyone is listening to this prior to Saturday, September 17th, you can still sign up. Uh, 18 holes, you and a buddy, uh, opposite-handed, of course, it's a lefty-righty. There will be different proxy deals, uh, you know, longest drive, longest putt, closest to the pin, payouts to first, second, and a random draw. Uh, this flyer that you're, if you're seeing this on YouTube, um, you can access it on all of our social media, uh, which, by the way, follow, like, and subscribe. That's important. We, we love it. We want to we want everyone to, to, you know, let us know that you're that you're out there. Uh, it says it starts at three, uh, but it actually starts at two thirty. I, I spoke with the owner out at Whispering Pines, and we just want to make sure that we're done before before sunset. So, um, yeah, super super looking forward to this on Saturday. I can't wait. Um, and I know Brett, you can't either. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun, man. Uh, yeah, I just I was just talking to my golf partner uh, a little bit today, and uh, we're gonna to ride together out there. So one of us, you know, can I don't know who it's oh, gonna be, but we have to flip <laughs> flip on the ride there. Whoever gets the best, you know, in the putting contest, Absolutely. the the pre putting contest, maybe I'll maybe I'll make a bet with him and say, uh, yeah, you know, whoever gets the gets that putt or closest to the hole at that putt. Gets uh, gets to drink and the other one has to drive. Maybe I don't know. Absolutely, and uh, kind of forecasting the future here. We're gonna have a couple of winter events um, after this event on Saturday. A couple winter ones with simulators. Um, still kind of in the works and talks for that. And uh, a spring event, and then kind of leading up to the granddaddy of all events, the the state lefty open in July twenty. 20- Second and 23rd, more information to come, but that will be at Riverwood National in Otsego. I did, I don't know if I told you this, but I did speak to um, kind of open the conversation with a local golf course um, who that has simulators in the winter. So uh, Monticello, I, I just kind of opened that door. I haven't really stepped through it and, and tried to you know set up a date or anything yet, but potentially Monticello this, this winter simulator event. So upcoming for sure awesome um, yeah you asked you asked also what what else we there is to talk about well i man i really think that this episode golf wise is going to be dominated by by the rumor mill the gossip train this is the people magazine of all mn left handers podcasts as we who's going to do what people are you know they're spats on putting greens so um yeah, I just that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a, a, a drama filled gossip mag of an episode today. So our our little set list we got here, you know, we got the, the lefty righty four ball. Uh, it's gonna be great that coming up. Next on the list here, Nostradoimus returns. What what do you what do you got for us? Okay. So I have to continue to toot my own horn a little bit here. A couple weeks ago I said Watch Justin Stock. He needs to be the star that the PGA Tour needs because of all these players going to live. And he just got out of the Corn Ferry Tour, and then he won um, the the Corn Ferry Tour Championship actually. And and I was kind of on him a little bit. I said he's gonna be one of those faces. He came he came up with Colin Morikawa, Victor Hovland, and Matt Wolf. You know that's a that's a pretty good class to come up with. And he was sort of in a press conference with them like these are gonna be your next stars injuries and whatever 
but he's back. He's starting to play well. And so I'm watching the No Laying Up preview show for the Fortinet, which is this week. Starts, uh, we're recording this Wednesday. It starts tomorrow, Thursday. And they do, they do picks. Um, and those guys, who have a little credibility, kind of know what they're talking about. They've done a lot more research on this than I have. They pick Justin Suh in a few in a few of their bets, and I've never talked. Well, that's not true. I have not talked to them. I have talked to them. Um, you know, they, we text and talk more than people know. Okay, one time, one. Um, but you know what? They they're picking them. I I feel like I might be onto something with my with my Nostradamus. We will we will continue to follow. Um, it's worth watching. And it's crazy that you just did that that YouTube, uh, you know, on our on our YouTube channel. You just did that piece on him too, and all of a sudden now he's the talk of the town. So, yeah, Fortinet this week. Let's let's see how it works out for him. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if you want to head to this next or you know some of this. Uh, you know, let's save the drama, the live PGA stuff for the end. Let's do something a little bit more fun here. The 26 hardest shots in golf. We talked about a little last week, uh, a little bit of the would you rather type type yeah, deals. Yeah. What, what do you got for me here? Um, here, why don't you throw throw two at me right now as I'm pulling this up again? Oh, I, I don't have this up right now either. Um, but I remember the the last time was would you rather out of the sand or uh, that that rough fringe you know where you can't quite get a full stroke without the uh, the uh the obstruction there um oh of the of the longer grass yeah yeah and then there was like hitting over trouble that was another that was another tough one that uh um the average golfer you know it gets in your head or so talking about a lie too shot out of a divot or a double break putt would you rather type deal Oh, I would so much rather double break putt. I cannot hit out of a already existing divot. It's so hard. You're supposed to come down at a steeper angle, take more club, all these things. I, I can't I can't make it work. Um, for me, it's, it's a double breaker for sure. See, when I go to the range and I'm hitting balls and stuff like that, Mike always makes sure, he is, makes sure when he's giving me some pointers and stuff like that, he makes sure I have the perfect lie. Me, I'm like, man, just chuck the ball down there, and however that thing lands, that's how I want to hit it because that's what it's going to be like in real life. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm going to be hitting that ball. It's going to be halfway in a divot on a, yeah, it's 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 sitting down. Mm -hmm. Here, I got I got one for you. Um, we've got the first shot after the group in front of you waves you to play through, or. Any shot right when the Bev card girl rolls up and you don't want to make a fool of yourself. Uh, I'm, Which I'm, one's more difficult? I'm a married man. The Bev card gal doesn't bother me. Um, you know, when I'm when I'm rolling up on a group of members that are five guys in five different golf carts and, yeah, they're totally just judging you. I know how I am when people are playing through. I'm totally judging them on whether or not I'm going to be waiting for them after they get to the next hole. So, yeah, I'm probably I'm probably more up on having to play through on someone. Yeah, uh, listen, married man or not, nobody's taking the Bev card girl <laughs> home with them. We're just not. They don't care. They they're they're only there because you tip them well. Uh, for me, it's it is this. I'm the same way. It's it's playing through. I actually I played. Sunday afternoon out at Monticello Country Club and I was playing well, driver was working, rhythm was there, everything looked good. I, I come up and it's just me as a single and I came up on a, on a foursome of guys and they, they waved me through and I get there on the tee box and they, they'd all hit their drives already so they're just waiting in their cart and I just big time banana slice, you know, left. Just go, as a lefty, it goes way left, right? Um, and I just said, the only thing I could say was, I, I think it's the audience effect. You know, <laughs> it's all you could say. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we know. It, it is what it is. So then I motored through there and hit my next shot and got the heck out of there as quick as possible. All right, I'm going to end on a tough one for you. Okay. Would you rather have to walk and grab your ball 
you know, 20 yards out of someone's backyard while they're outside on the deck, grab your ball, or would you <laughs> rather hit a ball that you just hit into someone on a different hole? Oh. <laughs> This is tricky. <laughs> I would rather, I would rather the embarrassment of of playing the shot from the other hole. I do not want to have to go into somebody's backyard and and pick up a ball as they're you know out on their deck or whatever. Just just it's watching. It's a with, one, man. It's a with this, one. this look of just disdain, like with our logo you know, on it. Are you are you letting that ball go? Uh, no, no, it's a Minnesota left-handers ball. Come on now, come on. No, that that's the thing for me, especially out um, at a course where where you and I play a lot of Riverwood, where there's a lot of houses, and a lot of those people are golfers. It's not like you know that whole neighborhood is houses. based off that golf course, right? These people know, and they're giving you looks of just shame when you <laughs> when you slice it into their backyard. Oh man! All right. Where do you land on that one? Uh, I'm probably with you hitting into someone else on a different hole and having to go up to them and play that one. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know the wind got a hold of that one. I don't know what happened. I know, but at least you're in the field of play. You know, <laughs> right, right. get away with that. <laughs> I've been known to hit a few houses, but hey. All right, so. Next up here on the list is there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the uh, Live Ryder Cup, President's Cup coming up, who should be on the team, who shouldn't be on the team. The, the uh, DP World Tour was just uh, this last weekend. Uh, a lot of the Live guys actually went to that event, one, because they were allowed to, and two, it's one of the ways that they can get their world rankings up, too, and, and still be a part of that and because they can't do it through the PGA Tour and, 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 and those events that they have. But, um, you know, Rory was pretty vol- vocal about it. Ian Poulter was re- really, uh, you know, pretty vocal about it. Uh, Billy Horschel, I got a few videos of that too. And, and on our TikTok, if you guys follow us on our TikTok, I, I post a lot of the a lot of the bigger stuff as it as it happens and as it as it's going on. Uh, plus, on top of all of those, all of that stuff going on right now, there there was there was a rumor that another PGA Tour guy was uh, leaving for Live, but for some odd reason a name never came up and then there was rumor it was kind of like john rom but john rom had a tweet come out that he was like you know what i mean so there's just there's a bunch of stuff going on right now um with that um and i i think i think first we start off with the um um the bmw championship the dp world tour uh stuff kind of you know something like uh billy horschel here I honestly feel like it's a slap in the face to, to the rest of the members of this tour that they're coming to play. Um, I believe it is the biggest uh, purse on the DP World Tour with the you know with a full field, and that they are going to be taking money out of out of guys' pockets this week. And so, so Billy's big argument was that he he thinks that these guys coming here for the Live Tour are are playing for the money and the world ranks. You know what I mean? Where a lot of these guys are playing, well, yeah, obviously for the world ranks. They're, they're, I mean, the money's the money's there, but you know, Billy's saying, "Hey, you're taking away spots from guys that are actually a part of this, that are here building what we have instead of the live tour." So Patrick Reed, um, even John Rom said said a few things, and he's not a live golfer; he's a PGA Tour guy, and he had his opinion to say about some of these live these live guys. Ian Poulter, you know, some of these European golfers that were over there in, in the, the Australian Australians too, but um, some of those guys that were over there have, I mean, Patrick Reed has been Ian Poulter; they've been a part of the DP World Tour for a very very long time and helped build that, which. And I don't know if many people know a lot about that type, the, the DP World Tour, but the DP World Tour isn't as uh, prominent as the PGA Tour. Like, the PGA Tour has a lot of really good American golfers and in, 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 in names that make it, it, it 
I don't know if it's my opinion or not, but a, a bigger deal than like the the DP World Tour. So when you lose golfers like a Sergio Garcia, you know, a guy that's in the Presidents Cup and the Ryder Cup and has is got probably one of the most wins in in those events for the Europeans. I mean, losing people like that in in having Billy Horschel come out and just badmouth these guys, it's like, dude, these guys were there with you building the DP World Tour and making what it is, you know what I mean? Other than other than Rory and some of the other guys, but yeah. No, I I, I see what you're saying. <clears throat> I think where I would where I would disagree is that they they decided to leave though. They decided to go and, and join this other tour that doesn't have a, a real structure. It doesn't like it, it didn't it doesn't matter to them the same way. It it and and evidence that they just don't care about it anymore, they care about it anymore, is is with Sergio Garcia when he decided to like Horschel was just saying, take a spot from somebody who could have played in that event. Uh shot seventy six and then especially because it was in London when the Queen died on Friday. They paused play for a day of grieving or it's just that's such a foreign thing to me, uh, me me or maybe us as Americans like why? I get that it's a big deal but I can't explain. I just don't have that connection. So anyway, they decided to, to put pause it and he at that point withdrew from the tournament and showed up at uh, the Texas Alabama game here back in the United States for this on Saturday, um, and that is Billy Horschel, like you say, slap in the face. Because what about somebody who wanted to actually try to play in this event? Sergio doesn't care, obviously. You know, like that's that's where I I think. I'm frustrated. But does he really not care? I mean, this is we're talking world ranking stuff, and when these guys have very minimal opportunity to really work at their world ranking, I mean, what's... I, my argument is, no, I, I don't think they care. I think, I think he's, at his stage of his career, Brooks Koepka's in a different spot. Bryson DeChambeau's in a different spot. Dustin Johnson's in a different spot. Patrick Reed, none of the said him. He's in a different spot. They still have the capability, the possibility to win a major. They still want to have world ranking points where where you know they need to be eligible to play in these majors. Sergio knows that his career's dead in the water. And he's always been a whiny little Come on now. Come on, let's see. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. The bias uh, decide. Um but and and that he's not going to win any more majors, so it's all hey. about that. Oh, dude! First money. Do I have to really die on that hill that Sergio's not going to win any you more? You don't majors? know that, dude. <laughs> Who's older, Sergio or Phil? Oh, Phil. Phil won it two, three years ago, dude. I know, but Sergio, but Sergio can't. He won't. He. Tiger he's, won it in 2019. He, he won a major in 2019. Weak. He's weak. Easy, Jesus. He might be listening. <laughs> hey, uh, we have a question from chat. Uh, sorry for my absence, but I see Nate has been growing his hair out. You bring him back Have a do? <laughs> you bring him back a do? Have <laughs> not. <laughs> you, um, the, you grow the hair out? Hey, let me tell you. Twice a week. Twice a week. Sundays and Thursdays. We got to keep this. I can't we gotta keep wait. This short. I can't wait. As to you do can that. see. As you can see. It's it's getting pretty thin in a few spots here. I can't here. wait Things to are... do the thumbnail for this one. <laughs> you'll be right in here somewhere. Uh, no, you're gonna have <laughs> really long hair. It's gonna be epic. I can't wait to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. Um, here, uh, I want to I want to play a few more videos from um, from this uh, John Rahm. He had his opinion to say on on uh, some of the stuff too that was going around. Is there? A a palpable tension in the locker room on the range this week you know are, are people not talking to each other I think there is with some players uh, and depending who you ask right I, th I think there is in my case uh, not too much I mean Sergio and I are great friends I'm good friends with a lot See, of them Sergio's so, a good uh, guy. my opinion of them is not going to change whether I agree with the decisions or not um, so that that's all I have to say I, I think it's maybe 
blown out of proportion a little bit by the media, right? Uh, those people up until a few months ago, like I said, dedicated his entire career to the to the DP World Tour. So uh, I don't think this is much as some people would think, but I could be wrong. I don't speak for the entire tour and the entire tournament. So uh, I think it's a bit in between what I'm saying right now and what a lot of people are saying. Is there a palpable tension? So, oh, that was I, yeah. you know, prior, so like this interview and then now the rumors coming out, like now that he okay, might. Okay, no, I'm going to stop you right here before you try to put some flowery spin on this. He has to say that he and he and Sergio are great friends. They're both Spaniards. It's a countryman thing. He thinks you don't know Sergio that. is a whiny, weak, only swear words left. That's all I have. You think John Rahm thinks that? Yes. You're lying. I'm not. You're lying. John Rahm is such a, <laughs> he's such a gentleman. I, and I don't know if I can trust him. God, he's just a John gentleman. John Rahm. I don't know that he's not going to live. Well, it's either, I, in my opinion, I'm thinking it's either Xander Schauffele or John Rahm. Victor Hoffman? Uh, on your radar? Call call Morikawa would be more on my radar than Victor Hovland. Oh no 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 no! There was already rumor that he might go. But yeah, but he's a he's a young American. He's Justin Thomas. He's and the rumor is now that they're coming out with this Rory tour, that some of these guys are like, "What the f- Rory tour? I'm out. I'm going to live." To that point. I can see any of the three that we just named, aside from Colin Markawa. I think he's a he's a tour guide to the end for now. I think it could be John Rahm. I think it could be Victor Hovland. In fact, I think it's one of those two probably. But it also could be Xander. I would be disappointed if it was Xander. Why? And I would totally understand. Oh, you, are you turning into a PGA guy or are you a live guy? Are you team Edward or Jacob? I want to know now. <laughs> this is this a Twilight reference? <laughs> yeah. It's sad that I knew that. Um, we need some stuff for the thumbnail, no, bud. <laughs> here's why I here's why I say that. This thing, and I sent this tweet out today. This thing is becoming a global league, and the Americans who are there are the villains. Xander Shoffley is not a villain, and that's why I said I'd be disappointed. It is going to replace the two team competition, and it is going to blow away the PGA Tour. Um, because the Ryder Cup will disappear, the President's Cup will disappear. I, they may not like go away, but they'll they'll lose importance, and it will become some sort of live versus PGA. I love cup it. I love or it. Team event. I think they they stay. They still may have the, the Ryder Cup. Better be the, the bad cup. guys. But but think about what you're doing right now. Yeah. You have the Ryder Cup and you have live, or you have the. You're beating her on the bush. I, we need an answer. That's chat. What. What an answer for what? I think. The live, are you a live guy or are you PGA Tour guy? I'm a PGA Tour guy, <laughs> but it's just the same as being a, a Vikings guy, mm. knowing that the Packers are going to kick our ass. They didn't. It no, is. They didn't. Okay, that's. Okay, they didn't. But I'm 32, and for 31 years of my life, they have. Here's <laughs> my uh, Nostra Realandris Damas thing. Okay. Okay. Vikings finish first in the NFC, Lions number two, Packers number three, Chicago Bears number four. NFC North, right there. I don't disagree with you. Was that a was that a bottle cap drop? Not like not quite a mic drop. Where's my freaking where's my 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 golf glove? I need this. Okay, we clearly digress. We need to get back on track here so I can finish my, my point here. When when you have the Ryder Cup guys and you have the Presidents Cup guys gone to live, so now you let's say Rom goes, you've got you've got Rom, um, you know now you'd have Cam Smith, you'd have Joaquin Neiman, you'd have sort of a a combo of all of the best from each international team trying to trying to play uh, the Americans, and I, I think that at that rate. At that point, there's the no live tour would would crush the PGA. Tour. Yeah, there's no there's no tournament to be had if these European guys keep on leaving. 
the PGA Tour, right. they're, they're not going to have a problem bringing people up. I mean, people want to play in the PGA Tour. There's there's a there's a line out the door to get in there. You know, there's a bunch of great golfers that are, are up and coming. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. the Europeans are going to one that are going to be suffering this. And, and now, now switching gears, talking about Rory, do you feel like this guy is talking way too much lately? I mean, he is just voicing his opinion nonstop. Nonstop. When he gets snarky, which I he can't does. Speak on behalf yeah. of them. So here's here's one clip. I got two clips to play from him. I can't speak on behalf of them if they will come in May. I'm not sure what live schedule looks like if there's a tournament on that week or where in the world that they're playing. But um, yeah, I. If I've said this once, I've said it a hundred times. I don't think any of those guys should be on the Ryder Cup team. I can't speak just, on just a nice behalf guy. of them. Just, they... a, just an all-around nice guy, don't you think? I really like Rory, and I'm okay with him speaking out, but I do think you asked the question, do you think he's, he's talking too much? He said something, re- and I'm going to get the quote wrong, and I don't even have it pulled up, but I'm going to get you close. He said... Uh, you know, in reference to the last round of the, the BMW PGA, you know, do you think a live guy can win? He said, no, because 54 holes are over. We're playing more than 54 holes. They basically, they don't have the stamina. You know, he's kind of being snarky about it. I can't speak but at the same time, of I don't them, disagree I with it. I don't disagree with his point that um, they probably shouldn't play the Ryder Cup. What does that make me? What does that make me that they sh- that I think they shouldn't play the Ryder Cup? Does yeah. that make me a prude? A Democrat? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> the PGA, uh, the PGA. Well, here's, here's a quote: The PGA will become the MLS, a second-class league, if all the people leave from worldwide. Mm-hmm. Here's an opinion that was brought up that I think is important, and we're just potentially dealing with some growing pains. And this, again, is from that same, from the no laying up guys. Um, I don't know how to place the fact, one, that Lee Westwood can shoot 70, or sorry, 62 in a, in a live a event. palpable tension? When... You know, Dustin Johnson can shoot a 63 or 64. Lee Westwood is pushing, you know, champions tour status here. What does that mean? How am I supposed to take that? Guys of that age don't shoot that good of scores. Young guys can. You know, they can get hot or really, really good players can. But old guys, does that mean that the courses are too easy? Does that mean that the competition? I, I, I don't know how to place that one and two when we look at somebody who wins the call the bay hill or the memorial or the genesis some of these just not a major but like a big tournament on pga tour what did they have to do to get there what does that mean that means that they got through the corn Ferry tour they probably battled for a couple of years um they came close and eventually they ended up winning a tournament, right? And and not just like, sorry, TPC Twin Cities, but not just the 3M, right? Like we're talking like a big name tournament. They, it took some steps. It took some work to get there. What did it take to win the Live Boston tournament? It took you saying, yep, I'll take the money. And there's a bunch of money. There's no, no it's a, pedigree. It's there's a weird no... Time in- I don't know. There's no minor league tour. There's no like. There's nothing that builds to it. It doesn't mean anything. It's not an accomplishment in the same sense. <sighs> and so, my question then is this: <laughs> I know we're kind of left speechless with this live tour thing because it's weird. Do we feel this way for a couple of years until we we find out that like some tournament on the live tour? Has some has some meaning, has some legacy. Maybe 
if you draft a guy, if you're a new guy and you come to the live tour and you end up on the, the majestics or the fireballs, maybe one of those teams is like a legacy team. And if you get drafted to that team, it really means something. Maybe in a couple of years, it's that'll be something. To. It's going to, but right now it's the, like, there's two of the, the top are these teams, two of the top know? 10 golfers in the world. And some of the biggest legends to ever play the game are in live golf now. Okay, these things are one. These guys are one signature away from signing a a TV deal to squashing the PGA Tour and making them nothing. I mean, if if I did, if it wasn't for just watching them on YouTube and they were on on Sunday on on Channel Four or Five or you know Fox or Carolina, you know what I mean? Any of those, and they just aired one day on Saturday of those guys golfing. It's it it changed things for those guys, in in my opinion here, and and back onto the Rory thing. This is another reason why I'm getting so sick of Rory, dude. This guy needs to pump his brakes. You know, it's a it's a weird time in golf, and and you know hopefully over the next couple of years we can resolve it in some sort of way, but but right now it's um, you know look I'm I'm, I'm a golfer. I yeah, play so golf. golf. I you know maybe put myself in the conversation too much at times but and you know i can't help myself because i feel strongly about it but um it's up to the you know it's up to the powers that be to to try to come to some some sort of um not resolution i don't think that's the right word but uh a strategy going forward so that the game can thrive I, you know, it's a so you're a golfer okay golf that's that's what you should do just golf don't worry about the politics and stuff Yes, you have an opinion. So does everyone else in the world. Okay, don't you stand up on your soapbox and go, "Hey, these guys shouldn't be here." Billy Horschel, put a sock in it. All right, you haven't been relevant for years. Okay, so let's everyone just take a step back, take a deep breath, and just play golf. I just want to watch you play golf, Rory. I want to see you smack the ball 350 yards and hit it into the sand trap and try and hit it out of there six times. Okay, that's what I want to see. I want to see you guys play golf. That's it. Okay. Live is going to get more tour. They're going to get more tour players. It's it's going to happen. We don't need to hear about Ricky Fowler and Tiger Woods meet up at the airport to go meet Rory and 26 other golfers to discuss the Rory Woods tour that no one knows what the hell it even is. But it's a thing. And they might play at night. And it could be competitive. Like, who knows? Oh, my gosh. Like, you guys aren't doing anything. If anything, you should be thanking these little players for leaving and bringing you guys more money on the PGA Tour and bringing more publicity to the game of golf. If anything, it's helping. So just play golf. That's what you're supposed to do. Sorry. So I don't entirely dis- – yeah, step down from your soapbox. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um <laughs> I don't entirely disagree with you, but I think you're ahead of your time. I think that opinion is going to take some time to get to. It's going to take some warming up to. And I don't think history will view you as wrong. It's just that something like this has never happened before. Some rogue tour has never pulled the best players in the world from the best tour in the world you know or the best league in the world whether it's the the nfl the mlb the nhl or whatever like it never happened and so they're gonna respond they're going to have a say they're gonna they're gonna react and i get that but i think you like i said i think that you're just ahead ahead of your time in that that will be the ultimate opinion did happen once. That was the American Football League and the National Football League. Donald Trump owned a team, and because he was throwing his own money at this team, he signed. God, he signed a big name, dude. Like, and then there was all the lawsuits. What, like going. about what year would? I want to say it was eighties, the eighties. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of, kind of like that. Um, I'm pulling it up here really quick. Um, yeah, it was the American Football League. 
Um, yeah, he had a big lawsuit with those guys, I remember. And, I mean, look at what the NFL ended up starting. I mean, now it's some big freaking um, uh, monopoly now. I mean. Where I think. Herschel Walker. That's different. who he signed. Oh, okay. And at the time, huge name. Mm-hmm. Obviously, mm-hmm. big name. Um, 83. And it, 1982, and 83. yet again. Just like every everything we're seeing right now in the world, every single hot button issue, whether it's a, a, a political thing, uh, uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, Ooh. whether it's a, whether it's a golf thing, whatever it is, social media is able to absolutely blow things up that couldn't have happened in 1983. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's just different. Yeah. It's just different. Mm-hmm. People, people are 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 seeing the opinions of their stars more more regularly, and they're having their own opinions. I mean, for crying out loud, we're recording a podcast, you and me, like with our opinions. So anyone can have a thought. I mean, and and that I think is is making this into a lot. So, what do you think about Billy Hor- uh, Billy and Ian almost getting into a fist fight here on the uh, practice screen? Yeah, I think I think this is perfect. I think it's actually a good time for us to kind of talk over this because I don't think there's any audio, just background noise. Right. But clearly, like you can see, it's heated body wise. Um, at one point, Poulter kind of has his hand up, like, "Okay, like breathe, dude, breathe. It's okay." And, and Horschel's, like, kind of fired up, kind of leaning in. Like, I don't know what, obviously, the conversation is, but it's, like, it's heated. There's some tension. Dude, yeah, and it's it gets so uncomfortable. The other guy's like, all right, dude, I'm out of here. This is just getting a little crazy. I'm not part of this. Yeah, I'm all. And I don't doesn't know. he kind of come back just to make sure they don't get in a fist fight or something? Well, and... Ian, Ian has done so much more for the game of golf and the DP World Tour than, than Billy has. I mean, I, I just, it's it's almost like two different generations talking to each other, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I also think that those old guys, those old names, they're just being used by the live tour. And that's fine. You have to do that. You have to pull the polters the Louis Oosthuizen, the Sergio Garcia, the Lee Westwood, because you need names. You're not going to pull the new young stars like David Pooj and, and Eugenio Chichara if you don't have some, some name recognition to your tour, if you don't have something to draw eyes. It's not drawing a ton of eyes. I get that. Uh, but But you're not pulling the potential young stars if you don't give these guys a chance, I, I, I suppose, not even take a flyer, just use them now. Um, and they benefit. They end up benefiting because they're going to make a ton of money. Um, but you need to you need to capitalize on their namesake right now to draw the young stars. And so I, I have less problem with those that older crew, those guys I just named, uh, going than I do with some of the younger guys. Because, again... I don't have to die on this hill either. Ian Poulter's not winning a major. It's just not. No, no. Um, don't say never, all right? God, okay, you're, you're okay. You're getting a little, a little too <laughs> on, on dropping that one in that opinion. No, I just, I just really think that that is, uh, that's a safe bet. And I, I, I don't blame those guys for going. I see that you, you just grabbed something, um, uh, from the back of the screen there. Why don't you? Well, I thought I'd end it. I'd end it on on this. We got some of our our apparel, our accessories, uh, finally showing up here. I mean, you you got a nice order of uh, some Strixon MN left hander balls. I got a uh, nice MN left handers uh, towels. That yeah. looks like it will hang perfectly off of my golf bag oh dude it it just looks so nice i mean i mean just when the sun hits it just right oh, just right Oof. it's beautiful uh so yeah 
Um, I really like how they turned out. Me and you are going to meet up tomorrow. You're going to look at it. They absorb water pretty well, too. They don't beat off like some of the cheaper stuff. So I'm pretty excited about it. It's it's kind of heavy, too. I mean, it's got a... Oh, good. It's got, and it's not like screen printed. It's like... It's almost like it's... Oh, that was a towel. concern. Yeah, so it's it's not like a, a logo. I mean, you can't... You know what I mean? It's not like... It's like it's dyed into the... You can just scratch right off of it. Yeah, it's not embroidered or anything like that, but... Man, I put this thing in the sink, bring some water under it, it absorbs water good. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I don't know. I say we order up, you know, a hundred of these bad boys and, and give a few out for free. See what people think. I mean, I sure like yeah. something, same Minnesota hanging off my bag. How about you? Yeah, I, I mean, that's who we are. So we want to, we definitely are proud of, proud of what we're building here. So Absolutely. I I will hang it with pride, um, even if it does have like a big, you know, brown dirt mark after I chunk my first shot real bad and have to clean that seven iron. Um, I'll still hang it with pride. All right, I want to end it with this. Um, Caleb in the chat here wants us to end it with this. Okay. Favorite golf cleats. How often do we talk about golf footwear? Okay, okay, I can I can say this. In my life, I have owned a pair of Nike, um, Footjoy, a, a few different pairs of, of Footjoy spikes. So not like the soft sole shoes, but like ones with the twist in spikes or whatever. Um, and I currently have two pairs of the of the soft sole shoes. Um, the spikeless golf shoe, which is, that's my answer. Um, but I think it's also pretty telling that in Tiger's comeback here since his leg accident, he's obviously a Nike guy. At the Masters and, and all subsequent majors that he played in, he was wearing foot joy shoes. There was, there, was a, uh, there was some hubbub about that. Uh, I don't know. So I think foot joy is the answer. And for me, it's the spikeless shoe. I actually have them as like my work shoe, sort of dressier shoe, uh, one pair of golf shoes. So that's my answer. So I have owned a total of two um, golf shoes in my life, and the first ones were Foot Joys, and I owned those since I started golfing in seventh grade, up until oh. <laughs> uh, actually. Probably probably the beginning of this year is when I got new ones. And I told myself I wasn't going to get new shoes until um, these ones started leaking. They never started leaking, so I never got new shoes. So um, this was the year I finally got a new pair of golf shoes. I went to Golf uh, PGA Superstore, and I got myself a set of the Spikeless, the Soft Soul uh, Pumas. And... They did not disappoint. These are these are the ones I got right here, um, but mine got the ratchet, the ratchet, uh, the ratchet laces, which I'm a huge fan of. It doesn't seem like it gets towards the toe tight enough, but if you mess with it a little bit, it, it you can, you can get there. So I, yeah, this is these are the shoes that I got in all black, um, and they got this this type of sole on the bottom. Really nice. I like them. Sure, sure. But I mean, are you gonna listen to a guy that's had? two pairs of uh golf shoes i mean i'm not the guy I, your credibility yeah. is in question there but i will say this you made the right move by going to the pga to a superstore uh that is that is my favorite spot i've been there twice in the last two weeks um it is the place to be Damn. all right buddy well hey another one in the books here it's been great thanks chat upgrade your hey dudes maybe get yourself a nice set of uh um golf shoes and uh as always subscribe like share follow check us out on all of your social media um i'm brent relander joined with uh, nate Dwimer here absolutely i think in our in our next episode a little quick preview we'll have a little um uh president's cup recap so check back for that. And 
we'll have an update on our tournament and how everything went. So wish us luck, guys. Everyone else, we'll see you out there. Um, Till next time, thanks a lot.